Well, sociology is the study of human societies, and that includes individuals within those societies, and that, in, it, you know, all the social institutions such as family, um, how we make decisions, uh, educational processes, including just the ones of socialization within your family, um, and also uh, religion and um, polity, or how we make decisions, and economics, you know, how we, how we use exchange of goods and services. And it is a different way of thinking and understanding the world, whether it's the human social world or the natural environment and our relationship with the natural environment. Um, and it gives us a kind of toolkit for um, understanding why we have the experiences we have and why we see the world and the issues the way that we see them. So. Sociology focuses on group interaction. So the unit of analysis is the group. Um, in contrast uh, with psychology that focuses more on the individual, um, the mind and individual behavior. Now, um, a lot of other social sciences, you know, they're, they're very much focused on the individual and, and as they should be, um, but there's this assumption in sociology that people's behavior is influenced by things outside of them. Um, we're, we're all born into this world with identities and genders and racial, ethnic identities, and all that matters, you know, and it matters more to some people than others. Um, and it doesn't define us and it doesn't, you know, kind of prescribe us for a particular life outcome, but it does influence the pathways that we may find ourselves on. Sometimes I think about it like a like an iceberg, how 90% of the mass of an iceberg is under the water and can't see it. Sociologists tend to think about society in that way as well. Um, there's certain aspects of our world that we're well aware of, but there's a whole slew of other issues that are hidden or just kind of embedded um, in, in these larger structures. And to be a good sociologist or to think like a sociologist does mean that sometimes we try to delve underwater and, and try to see that 90% that, that's hidden from the everyday world. So the goal for sociologists is to, to make the familiar unfamiliar. So you don't take for granted the assumptions. You actually might start with the assumptions and look at those critically in terms of um, how, does it, how do those assumptions shape the way that we see things. So for example, we are trained in the United States to have an individualistic orientation, right? We're taught that the United States is a meritocracy, there's a strong ethos of individualism, that people will succeed and fail based on either their work ethic or their talent or, their, or a combination of the two, right? And so that's kind of assumption that's built into basically all of our major social institutions. And so as a sociologist, we ask the question, well, is that true, right? And so you kind of flip it and don't take that assumption for granted. You actually interrogate the assumption and then go out and investigate to see if that's the case. And so then that opens up an opportunity for you to see things that you otherwise wouldn't see. Our cultures uh, affect often the way we explain our behaviors. The, your behavior, mind behavior, is as much biographical as it is historic. It's historic in the sense that larger social institutions and forces intersect with my biography to f completely explain why I do what I do and how I do what I do and where I do what I do. Uh, but it's not just constraints, macro social structures do facilitate our behaviors. Um, that, that to me is, is, is one of the powers of sociology is that we're able to look outside of the individual and see how there's these other things in the world, these other powers in the world that are providing opportunities for some, providing constraints for others, and situating us on particular pathways. Um, individualism matters, you know, the individual behaviors and psyche, those things matter, but, but culture is powerful, and part of its power is that it's sometimes hidden, and it's this embedded, um, unrecognized component of our day-to-day -day world. Um, sociology tries to uncover that and tries to, you know, kind of rip the curtain back so that we can see 
how it is that these things matter, these things influence us. They don't dictate our outcomes, but they, they are influential. So sociology is a really valuable toolkit. It's a way of engaging systematically with the world. We watch patterns and we look at patterns and we look at social institutions like the education system, the healthcare system, um, the criminal justice system, media. Sociologists are everywhere and they're using sociological perspectives in the work that they do in every day and that could include business, it could include marketing, it could include social work, um, it could include people who are doing number crunching for either hospitals or for government agencies. If you're working for government, people want to assess right, their operations, what's happening, how people perceive you know, the services that they're receiving. If you look at the education system, they've got standardized tests, they're doing analysis in terms of students' attendance, right, um, pass rates, um, truancy issues, mastery of content. I mean, even the private sectors, they want to evaluate um, the effectiveness of their operations, right? So what are their goals in terms of their business? Are they meeting their goals? Are there gaps? What can they do better? I mean, all of that kind of leads you in the direction of evidence-based decision-making processes. We have former students who are lawyers. We have some that work for um, universities where they do institutional research to find out what the trends are for their particular students. We have some that work with the Census Bureau. Um, we have some that work in social services. Many who, with just a bachelor's degree, do go on to work for social services. There are some who, are, who have been employed by multinational corporations to do marketing research. Who buys what, where, when, how, and with whom? Those are job opportunities that sociologists tend to fill. I also like to think about sociology as a people science. If you're curious about the world, you might make a good sociologist. If, you, if you're a people watcher, I think that that makes you a good sociologist. Or if you ever just ask, if you're ever curious about why the world exists the way that it does, or why people do the things that they do, um, those are inherently good sociological questions. I like irreverent questions, questions that will shake people's belief, and then, you know, we can talk about how do we best answer these questions using evidence, empirical evidence, not just you know, folk tales.